Right, so I've, 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 I've tidied it all up. Um, again, this is still the stupidly small 2 amp hour battery, which is way too small for something like this. Ah, oh, there we go. So, um, yes, I fitted the new transformer. And replace the boards around. There it is with its new with its mess. And some of the mankiest PIRs in the world. Those are the two I'm keeping. Those only cost me 99p, so nothing lost, nothing gained. So basically what happened last time is that those were in here and it was completely ruined. The Transformer, first of all, was shot completely, and um, the windings or whatever, they fused together, and then it got really hot and, well, nearly burned, and then those last two diodes there, um, they were also fried, so the bridge rectified, or so forward biased, or, and blew itself up, or just had an overcurrent issue, so there's that, so... Oh well, solder's untested, so I don't know which one of the installs it was. There's an ancient ADT logo and a private alarm company, so I have no idea who ripped it out, but whoever did should have taken it with them. Oh well, lesson learned, I guess. That serves me for getting untested, unused, well no, untested solder scene stuff, but oh well. Thank goodness that I bought spares at the same time with the keypad. So, what I'm going to do is use this to program a zone. I don't know which zone I'm going to program, but I'm probably going to have to link it out, which is going to be extremely annoying. Um, using the 9629 overlay, <coughs> which is very nice. So this is a series, this is a revision 1 keypad, um, the one in there is a revision 2, um, so this is from 88 to 95, and this is an issue 12, that's an issue 12, and the one that I could be getting is also an issue 12 board, so this is a 9610, um, because of the reset pins, and it's also got different printer connections, etc, and that's a 9600, because you have to remove the non-volatile memory all the time so I'm in engineers menu and it asks me to program a zone so I say yes and I'm going to program zone 01 yes and I want the zone to be used and the description is not okay so at this time I fit the overlay and then I press no and then each of these keys here, you have to press this and then press one of these keys. So this does the first digit, so for this it will be A, this will be D, this will be second, so B, E, this will be the third, so C, F, and then this would be naught to 9, so that will be 1, 2. Um, then this is backspace and also brackets. And then you have the usual no, yes. So, let's call this... Um, Let's call this um, P and then if I want a space I'm going to have to press this and then 9 and uh, Let's give it a description. Let's call it Yeah, I've still got three bits left, so There we go, so if we press yes, that's now going to be the panic button in the son's bedroom, whoever that might be. So, 
if we have it disabled as a group zone, it will then be a 24 hour zone. So that's presumably correct. And then it's going to be a 24 hour zone. So it's going to be monitored every 24 hours. And if it goes off, the panel will react to it. So um, it could be silent PA, which then means that you would have an STU plugged into it, which would be one of these things. And those will be plugged up to your red care service, which costs a fortune. So you don't want that anymore. You might as well have a GSM dialer. So we don't want silent PA. We could have technical alarm, which then just sounds for keypad sounders because it shows the zone's being violated in a place where no one should go. It doesn't need to be a 24 hour alarm because then if an employee went into the refrigerator, for example, and then you have a police knock on your door the next five minutes. That wouldn't be a very good idea. So we press no and then it's 24 hour alarm. So then if the safe is open, for example, the alarm would go off without the master, without the manager, um, code owner um, omitting that zone prior. So then we go back to audible PA. Another... Um, the thing that denotes this to being a 9610 is that it doesn't have the fire zone, which this would. And that's replaced with 250 event log and also a remote reset, which the original panel had, but that was a remote reset terminal, which is just a pig to use. So let's have a disaudible PA. And then it's going to ask us to enter another zone. So we don't really want to do this anymore, so... Pressing no will just pull you down. So we don't actually need this overlay anymore, so we can say goodbye to that. So do we want to program the groups? No, we don't because there's nothing in there. Do we want to program the outputs? Not really. There are four outputs on this, two Rayleigh activated outputs on the zone expanders, and then two transistorized ones right there. So uh, program bells, no. Uh, do we want to set the engineer code? Not right now. Uh, what's miscellaneous? Daytime becomes disabled because there's no communicator. Um, press no, yes. Engineer reset is disabled. Abort facility is disabled. That's also a telling that it's a 9610. No line fault because there's no point. Remote reset is also disabled because that's just useless. There is no logging printer. Delayed entry alarm, no point. And then auto rearm would be once as standard. So there's that menu. CSI CE codes not needed. Load defaults. Well, we could do that if we wanted to. We don't want to reset the system. We don't want to program it. Let's. Mm, shall we? No. Um, let's test the bells. So there's that. Then there's the bell which energizes the bell outputs there where TR is, but it also. Activates that relay, which is stands on the 9610. Then the strobe is going to be this output here. And then we're testing the keypad sounders. Very simple. So then output 1, wherever that is, transistorized output, will then be energized. And so would this. So these um, only give 125 milliamps. These give 1 amp at 24 volts. So, for example, if you had a 24 volt bell or something that you wanted to use, I know my school would. So, um, that's output 3 and then 4. And if you want to view the log, there's nothing there. And actually, I am going to... Ah, yes, there's also a keypad tamper. That's quite annoying. No, there we go. Let's view the log. Access user rate, that's the engineer. Um, oops. Okay. Oh, there we go. Panic bed sun. So basically, since I've got circuit one active, you have circuit one and anti tamper one, so I'll be wanting to have a closed circuit all the time as this is normally closed. If it was normally open, like if you programmed it for a smoke detection, for example, um, then it wouldn't matter. You have to specifically say if it's NO or NC. So, um, don't want that. 
No, we don't want to bell test. Yes, we do want to view the log. So, um, pressing 3 on 1 will pull you down. So, there's no one, nothing else. Uh, access user 1, that's how you disarm the system. Access user 1, keypad tamper. Usual mains failure. And watchdog fault, which basically means that something like static or a mains surge has crashed the panel and just restarted itself. So if you have too many of those, something has definitely gone wrong. So no, we don't do anything like that. So basically, it's how you use this and test. 